change the frequency a little, but I don't I don't know what tool you use to do it. Nor do I, and I don't know why it's work at one point and not at another with the same exact setup. No. I'm not sure what I don't understand is that these are these they have no transmission except they're going right to a recorder. There's no out. Well, no, the I'm snow. Peter, dude. The snow isn't the snowball transmitting. Yeah, but it's not transmitting anywhere. It's going. It's going directly into this. Yeah, that's what this muting work for. This muting muting snowball. It's just this. No, no, I'm saying that's a good thing. Muting this is a good thing. Hey, Chris, can you turn that back on? Yeah. Do you hear feedback? I don't hear any feedback. Just okay. It sounds better. Jamie Grove's in the house. That is true. Jamie Grove is in the house. Are you with that guy? I love Jamie Grove. Man. How's it going, brother? You ready? All right. I'm, I'm glad we got a close-up camera. Yes. You know Paul Devlin from Hey, how's it going, Paul? Good to meet you. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, one time he's going to be I don't hear it. 
Testing, testing. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's not the problem. It is. When you watch closer to Italian, I was just interested to see how we turn it off and see what happens. Is there just shut the audio off for a second and go, hey, okay. No, there's no. Yeah, that's us. 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 Yeah, There we go. There we go. Oh, really? Oh, awesome. Uh, okay, Chris, we're moments away. Oh, you're very tired. I can't. We already have six viewers, so we're maybe we haven't announced that yet. Less than moments away. I haven't put up the post yet. Uh, yeah, but I've invited people. And All right, let me. Uh, the world cares. <laughs> So let's see if you can beat our record. We had 150,000 people watching yesterday. Nice. Who was it? Uh, so Me. So it was a new, it was new. A newcomer. New, newcomer. just sling it along. <laughs> 150,000 people. Not faded on the webcam. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool. Jamie, tell us. We want to know. What are we doing? What are we doing? What is this creature or John? Are we ready here? Bad intro. Bad intro. Do you want to welcome an intro? Right? Wait, hold on. Do you want an intro? Uh, sure. Hey, I'm Jamie Brooks. Wow, you just love him. I didn't need me. 
So Matt, I don't intro uh, left. Two seconds, he's in the link, and then we're there. Great. That's free to be on camera. Great. Um, and we're going to have to be zoomed way freaking much the whole time for this, because they can't see anything. I'm saying the home viewer. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to zoom way. Yeah, but right now, he's about to say, hi, I'm Jay. I like you. We're his man, it's the police. Okay, we already inadvertently have 12 people. Yeah. Two seconds. Welcome, guys. This is Jamie Grove. <laughs> uh, do we really actually accidentally have some people watching? Yes, we do. All right, say hi. It's official. Hey, hey, Jamie. How's it going, man? How you doing, man? Hey, you want to say hi to the home viewers who are watching us? Hi, everybody. Uh, we're here with Jamie Grove at Monster Palooza in Burbank, California. And Jamie's going to spend the next three hours uh, painting this beautiful zombie bust. Right? Probably take three hours. Well, just slow it down, slow pace it yourself. Um, two hours of Jamie Grove. Two hours of Jamie Grove. He's going to do a lot of talking. Um, but we're going to be doing this live all day long. We have Jamie uh, for the next three hours or thereabouts. Uh, and then Don Lanning is going to join us at uh, 2 o'clock for an hour. Uh, and then after that, we've got uh, Tim Martin coming at uh, 3 until 6. So we'll be broadcasting live all day long. So stick around. Um, I guess we'll start. Nice. What kind of paints are you using? What is this material that you're painting on? What, what is that character? Who are you from? Yeah, set, Why? set the stage for Where'd you get that down. ink? All right. Yeah, we're going. Okay, that's that's good. Right, right here. You're this is the one. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're live, live, dude. All right. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Jamie Grove. I'm going to stand with some school character arts. Today, I'm going to do a little mini zombie head. Um, just a little garage thing, something fun. Nothing too complicated uh, with paints that you can get at pretty much any hobby store. Uh, didn't want to make it too complicated, but I wanted to make it fun. Something that you can do at home and um, something that doesn't cost a lot of money anyway, as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Some of the paints that I'm using, like I said, are just uh, little model paints from the hobby store. It's all going to be uh, acrylic. Nothing's going to be toxic at all. It's all going to be. Something we can do it into here and then kill it. So, uh, the material that I'm going to be painting today is just a uh, casting resin. Uh, I already pre primered it and I'm going to use the primer as basically my base coat. Um, like I said, nothing too complicated, something that you can do at home. So, we're going to start with the primer gray and it's just a white casting material that I made at home. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to start with basically getting some paint on this thing and take it from there. I don't know necessarily what I'm going to do, but I know it's going to be fun and neat, and we'll take it from there. If there's anything that anybody wants to see, let me know, and we might incorporate it in this and make it look cool and do some neat monsters. So I'm going to start. I'm going to custom make all my, my colors pretty much too. I'm going to start with a red, kind of brown color. It happens. I'm just going to start by basically brushing it everywhere. What this does is capture all the detail once I start wiping it off. We'll do a series of dry brushing and just having fun with the paint brush, basically. And this is all acrylic, which is basically water-based paint, so any excess that I want to uh, wipe off, I'll just use a wet rag and uh, wipe it off more, so. Thank you. 
And this is basically going to be the undertone of what you're going to see here. And the rest is going to be, like I said, a series of dry brushing of different colors. So on this initial base cut, I'll, I'll do different areas, kind of different colors, and we'll go from there. Continue adding this color all, all around the piece. That's what I get covered again, like I said. Just want to start getting an undertone and start pulling out some of the detail. Attention, buffs and blues and attendees. In 10 minutes, we will be doing the Monster Squad photo walk in Parlor Room 129. So if you want to get your photo taken in the Monster Squad, go to Room 129 in 10 minutes. Thank you, Monster Squad. Heard of it? <laughs> Monday, priority one. I want to make sure to give me key parts of the mouth as well. Just kind of show the paint there. You don't want to have any white spots show. Cool, it's live. Get in there. You can see as I start wiping off the paint, you can see detail on the little notes of the paint. Oh, well, sure on. Yeah, it already is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can bring in the, the, um, the predator helmet if you want to fix it. Yeah, hey, get on in there, Bruce. <laughs> Do you want to ask any questions? You're on. You're live on camera around the whole world. You want to ask Jamie some questions about it? Come here, stand right here so they can see you. No? Okay, come on. Get out of there. Um, yes. Um, I gotta figure that out. Andy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, uh, yeah, 
So, Jamie, I know it might be awkward, but the more you talk, the more noise comes out of the speakers and the more people stop. Oh, yeah, just so you know, 68 people are watching you. Uh, I don't know. It may feel weird, but it just gathers a crowd. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm still adding this base coat. And as I'm doing it, I'm kind of altering the colors again. Like I said, this is just going to be the undertone for it, um, which is probably the lengthiest part of the process. I'm going to do an increment so it doesn't dry too much on there, so you can actually wipe away the tape. Okay. And then as I'm doing it, I'm just slightly altering with colors and adding colors, just so it's not one solid color. So once I start putting on the high points and highlights and all that, the color will suddenly change underneath instead of being, it just adds more flavor to it. Jimmy, where's the maquette from? Where's the sculpture? You know, I got it from, I got this uh, this little sculpture, this little maquette from a, a friend at work that was giving away a bunch of stuff. And uh, one of the things that I do when I'm at home with my kids is uh, when I'm in the garage, I want them to be a part of what I'm doing as well. So I make, so I molded this uh, piece, and I gave I gave a copy to my my two daughters, and as I'm outside painting stuff. They come in and they kind of mess around, uh, but I don't think it's from anything. To be honest with you, I think it's just a, uh, a random sculpt that somebody did years and years ago. But I thought it was cool. It was obviously to be the uh, the hip thing right now. I thought it would be fun. It's something not so complicated that. You know, you need a, a studio to do it, and it's something that you can just do at home and, and piddle around with and make it look cool and have fun with it. it and that's one of the things you can as well, is enjoying it and having a lot of fun with it, and using your imagination, doing something that you would like to see, and, and just bring it to life. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to become a painter. And, uh, so effects artist was just to bring it all to life and have the last, the very last look of it and the last hands that are on it or mine right before it goes on the screen. And uh, then you can look at it and say, oh, I painted that for them. What everybody's going to see, they're going to see basically the sculpture and the, uh, the paint job. And uh, if you do, uh, a shoddy job and a paint job, you can make a good sculpture look really bad. And with a uh, with a good uh, paint job, you can make a bad sculpture look pretty good. So I always thought painting was kind of the main thing so that really finalizes the look on the character, the creature, what have you. Uh, we're almost done here with this. Uh, Hold on one second. And Jamie, uh, Scott Young wants to know, can you use the dry brushing technique on a foam-filled latex bust? Foam-filled latex bust. Who is this again? This is Scott Young. Scott, I think he's in Ireland. Scott Young, how's it going, bro? Um, you can do dry brushing just on about everything. Um, it's just a matter of using the right medium. Uh, if it's going to be a, uh, what was it, a foam fill? Yeah, latex bust, it's like a poly foam fill, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you can, you can do that. Uh, when we paint big creatures and stuff like that, we, you know, our, uh, if they're made out of foam latex, we do a series of dry brushing, air brushing. Um, 
just a combination of different techniques to like, get you to your final look. And, and yes, dry brush is one of them that we do on foam latex as well. You could do it on silicone as well if you have the uh, right consistency and, and uh, the opacity of your paint. So yes, uh, you can do that. No. Try it. It's all over. All right. Now we're just, I guess I'm just finalizing this finish code here. Once this is all done, like I said, this is all going to be an undertone. It's not going to be bright red and clownish like it, like it looks right now. So talk about that um, that undertone uh, approach for those who don't really know what no, no, undertone is. Okay, yeah, undertone basically is uh, how you're setting the. It's not hard to explain, but I want to use the right terminology. It's what you're going to see underneath it. Like I said, when I'm done with this whole thing, it's going to be fleshy, gross, and all this, but inside the cracks and everything, you're going to see these reds. And these. So it's going to be, it's the first color applied, and it's going to be basically the last thing that you see when you're finished looking at it. It's just going to be a underneath color that is going to just keep through enough to, to then bring a little bit of life into your paint job and to your character job. So as the paint dries as well, you can still kind of work some of that detail out. And all I'm doing is taking a rag and literally trying to wipe off as much paint as I can. And what this allows me to do too is once I start doing this, I can start seeing just random designs and shapes that I want to start enhancing, like on the side of the space here, I can start seeing some rotten flesh and stuff that I want to make look deeper, and on the outside I'm going to make it look a lot uh, lighter, so it has that appearance of being deeper and a little bit more gruesome. I think we're ready to start dry brushing a couple of colors on here. And I'm always going to kind of go back and forth too. As I see stuff, I'm going to start popping them out. Um, and there's really kind of no rhyme or reason to it, but I'll just explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I'm going to take like a, like a yellow ochre. So, uh, conceptually, how long has this zombie been dead, uh, as far as you're concerned? This is going to be a rock song. This isn't, this isn't going to be very fresh. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be around for a little while. Alright. Right. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to start putting a highlight on everything. Again, this starts bringing out some of the detail as well. You start seeing shapes. And Cool stuff that's starting to happen. Again, kind of doing this all over the place, and this kind of starts bringing in your fleshy tone coming in. We're going to do a series of different colors on this to make it look really juicy and disgusting. 
This camera is sharp. What is he talking about? Some commenter. Some. Hi, buddy. So again, just to click him out of drive rush, you can already start seeing more shapes here. Already starting to look a little bit more flat. One of the things they're going to do when you drive rush too is you never really go in like one particular direction. You want to be kind of sporadic and, and move all over the place. And so that way too, you won't see brush strokes and brush lines um, if you're doing it one certain way. So you kind of want to alter it around and uh, switch it up a little bit. Make sure you always get underneath the chin. I said in my previous video um, that uh, it's one of the main things to neglect it on. It's usually underneath the chin and the bottoms of the ears. And it looks great from here, but if you turn it up like that, and that's usually how you see it. And the film is usually laying down or it's dead or whatever. But you end up having a white spot here and a white spot under the nose. So. It's always kind of good to, I usually try to knock those things out first while as I'm doing it. It doesn't have to be high detail underneath there, but just enough to work. There's some paint on there, so it doesn't look like it's rough. That's fine. Tail slate. Tail slate. Kicking butt, bro. Chingy Front side with Jamie Chi. I'm in the movie. Here's a specific question. Uh, this is uh, one of our viewers has Ben Knives. Blood scab that he uses for latex appliances and Halloween costumes. Can that kind of thing be used on a sculpted bust? And if so, how would you seal it? The blood scab on a uh, yeah, usually that stuff doesn't dry very well. Right. It, it usually it always stays pretty gummy. Um, if it's just something temporary, just like for a shoot or something like that, you can pretty much use whatever you want. Um, but if it's going to be a display piece, something that you can have around and you can touch and look at, whatever, um, I would probably use something else um, on the top of my head. I can really, you know, if you want to, I'm going to show another technique too. This might answer your question. But if I, I'm going to do a, a blood on this guy, have some blood running down his mouth, and I'm going to do that with uh, some inks and a, a one minute epoxy. So hopefully, when we get to that point, we It'll answer a couple of questions, but it, it stays hard, it's not sticky, and you can tint it to any color you like. Um, so, when we get to that, I'll, I remember I'll try to bring it up again. But um, I wouldn't use the scab stuff for something that's going to be perfect. Small? I'm wearing a small. Yeah, still kind of just putting on the, the highlights and capturing, pulling out some of that detail. But as I'm doing this, I just see more and more stuff that I want to add. We'll go in there with some washes and some more colors. And really makes this thing look uh, fleshy and disgusting. But as you can see too, as I'm doing this, all the paint is kind of just becoming the underneath tone. And at the end of this thing, too, when I'm finished with it, you know how we're going to do it, where's Matt, but uh, we're going to 
give this thing away. I, I it was one of my agreements to do this. If I get it, uh, I wanted to give it away to. Sorry. Uh, we're gonna do it by. Uh, John, listening. Yes. So I was just telling everybody that when we're done with this, that I wanted to give it away, and uh, if we want to uh, give it away here, because I need to something online. No, I don't necessarily care how, but as long as it does go to somebody that really. Maggie, that's what she's going to cost you. We'll probably make one. a contest where people. Did Matt talk to you about a contest? Yeah. Contest? Yeah. All right, that's happening. Yeah. Maggie's all over it. All right. Nice. That is very generous of Jamie S. Bro. The legacy of Texas San Luis Studio. Well, I'll start with me. Everybody on the screen. In some areas, I'm going to start hitting a little heavier. Those high points is back the muscles. Underneath the jaw. Cheek area. All <laughs> oh, Well, this is going to be down with a brush, so we can, all the colors are going to be adding in. It's just going to be, like I said, a series of dry brushing um, washes. We'll do a little bit here. So what I'm going to do right after this is I'm going to start enhancing some of the deeper areas. And I really want to make one deep. What product is being used to color the bust? Some people are coming in late. What, what's your paint product? Uh, the uh, the paint that I'm using is just a little model acrylic. Um, I got it at Burbank Casa Hobbies. Um, everything that. <laughs> um, Everything that I'm using is something that you can get that's readily available. Um, local hobby store, nothing that I'm doing today. I didn't want to do something that can only be done in the studio. Um, I wanted to show you something how you can have fun in the garage and uh, enjoy it. Hey, that's like that.
wiping it off. And, But uh, it's going to be great. So I didn't keep it. I always make you guys another one. That's true. We're we'll wrapping it off. All right, we're we'll wrapping it off. You're going to make us another one? Sure. All right. Um, hey, guys. Uh, once again, a reminder we're here with Jamie Grove, uh, one of the top painters in Hollywood, uh, the guy who paints the Iron Man suits. The guy who uh, makes magic happen with paint, um, feel free to ask him questions. Uh, we're going to be painting for the next little while. Any questions you have about creature painting, he's the best in the business. So ask, 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 and he might answer. Maybe. Maybe. I will get it. No, we moved it. Iron Monger's pretty big. Iron Monger, too. 
um, for the first um, Iron Man. That was probably around 14, 15 feet as well. Um, yeah, we've done that just recently for a uh, commercial that um, we got canceled. But uh, we did this life size uh, humpback whale. We did it in nine days. We sculpted a home, molded it, and pulled a, uh, a copy out of it. We painted it on me and uh, probably about five other guys painted this thing in about four hours. And it looked pretty impressive, but uh, big things, yeah, we've done like, tons and tons of good things. Even the robots from the real still were pretty big. Um, the alien from Cowboys and Aliens was, was probably about eight feet tall. So, yeah, we've got quite a bit of big, big monsters. Robots and all that kind of stuff. Dude, you're going too fast. He just lost a little deniability. It has to do with the spells. You go back and forth with highlights and shadows and stuff. And that just kind of pops out in what I'm looking at. Yeah, we, 
various colors. Uh, just uh, start adding them. More colors. Yeah. Quick question, Jamie. When you're painting a monster for a movie, do you paint shadows like you would for like a board game miniature? Um, yeah, we still always paint shadows to a certain degree. If you don't make it so stark, we kind of rely on the light to do that itself. Um, but we do help it by adding a darker color as well. So, yes, to a certain Any advice about iridescent paint? Uh, Lisa Marie feels like when she uses it, it makes stuff look cheap. How do you make it look good? Here, does it It's one of my favorites. Um, there's no real answer to that. <laughs> Do it to the, where it looks good and real and not overpowered. And I think that's one of the things that makes it look cheap. Is um, putting so much on that it looks phony. Um, kind of like sometimes the saddle is a little bit more. Um, I usually use iridescence for to enhance a color that I usually want want enhanced. Say if I want pink or blues or something like that, I'll usually hide it in an area um, to where only if you're going to turn it just a, a little bit that you're just going to see the reflection of these various colors coming out. So. Um, I think that's one of the things about iridescence is, is it always kind of has a phony quality to it, but you can always incorporate it in real paint jobs, and, and that's more of just kind of using your eye and trusting your eye and how to, you, you want to make something look really cool. What if, what if you paint something wrong? Is there a good way to remove paint or paint it over, or what do you do? <laughs> painting something wrong. It always seems like when you're painting something, especially for a it, um, you're painting over stuff. If you'll think it's cool, then you'll show it to the producer or even the bosses, and they'll want to change things. So you're constantly painting on top of stuff. But um, if you use a medium, it, it always depends on what your medium is. If it's acrylic, it's something you can wash off. Um, if it's silicone, if it's something that's permanent, you kind of have to pick it out and start all over again. Like, there's various ways of fixing these things. But remember too that it's all just paint, so you can always paint over it. Instagram JSG. FX. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah. 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 I'm here to ruin this broadcast. No, this is Matt Winston from the Stan Winston School. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to 
I'll remind you, that those of you who are joining us late, who this guy is. This is Jamie Grove. Uh, he is one of the top painters at Legacy Effects, uh, formerly Stan Winston Studio. He's also at Stan Winston Studio and has been one of the top painters uh, at the shop for years. When you need an Iron Man suit painted, this is your guy. When you need a zombie painted, this is your guy. When you need a creature painted, this is your guy. He's one of the very best in the world, and he is here today to answer your questions while he does this demo on this little zombie bus. So all around the world, please feel free. This is a great opportunity. Matt Mitchell McCallan says hello to you. What's up, Mitchell? How's it going? He wants to know if Jamie's going to use... Uh, Use a little crepe hair or anything on this guy. Uh, I was thinking about it, but um, All right. I'm I'm leaving while Jamie answers that question. Anyway, ask him lots of questions. Hey Jamie, Scott wants to know: Do, do you ever uh, sell privately created pieces to collectors? Uh, uh sure. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? I, I used to sculpt when I was young. I, I haven't in a while, so I mean, I'm sure I can still make my way, but uh, I'm not as quick as some of these guys that do it every day. But yeah, I used to. Plus you and Trevor and, and, uh, and Johnny Sarepka who painted this. Uh, yeah, it was all of us there. Sure. Uh, That's you, the first one. You, Sarepka. Trevor. 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 Yeah. I think Mike Mansell was a part of that too. No, we love Am, we I, love, am I in your bubble? We love the whole thing. Uh, we want to see a hair country. Tell Sleepy like Johnny. I'm going to tell you all how to say Do you want to see a hair country lesson with Denise Peavy? Tell Sleep. It's Dennis say Libibi the Bear. Is it like Don Dillinger? I think it's Don Dillinger. You know Matt Weinstein? Call me Mark Wilson. Uh, uh, is it hard to achieve a translucent effect of painting, or does it depend on the material you're painting on? Is it, is it hard to achieve a translucent effect with paint, or does it depend on the material you're painting on? Uh, it can always be a little tricky. Uh, silicone, obviously, is probably one of the easiest things to get translucent just because of the silicone is translucent. Um, when you want to take something hard, like something like this, uh, one of the things I had to do not that long ago was um, an actor for a movie that we're doing. I had a resin bust, and um, I basically painted it to look like him. And that was, was translucent, but we also use a translucent resin. Um, but to create translucency on something that's hard or soft, it, it's kind of putting it down in layers and, and, and using various techniques and, and light colors, not being so stark with your colors, and just knowing how to blend them in properly and make them. It can be tricky, but I don't necessarily say hard. Trick question. Hold it. Be pretty busy on Jurassic Park 4. I have no knowledge about that. This is Jamie's lesson on silicone, realistic silicone flesh painting. The dude kicks patootie, and this is silicone and translucent as anything you've ever seen. Go check it out on our site. Basically, right now, on this little zombie head, right now, is I'm adding just the slightest amount of green on it to try to cancel out some of that purple and, and making it look a little bit more aged and rotten. Uh, 
Go get to it, son of a bitch, and we're just going like, ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, most of your paint ends up all over your table. As you can see, I'm just using, uh, usually put a few colors out and I start incorporating them all together. And I just, really have, just kind of go into what you want to see, going for a particular color. Realism that we want to achieve is. And since this is kind of phony looking, I'm going to try to make it a little bit more real. It's always kind of weird too painting the, the camera because we always have to have a face in the camera instead of usually when I'm painting I got it's right up in the, all of my business so awesome. I And one of the reasons why I decided to do something small and little um, like this was, um, especially on Legacy, we do tons and tons and tons and tons of uh, maquettes for movies, and uh, so it's kind of a, a big part of painting as well. When we do paint something full size, to, we always usually basically start from a small version of it. And also, when we make a bust of something like some of the Iron Man's that we had to do, uh, the, the Mark V, the suitcase suit, uh, which was all CG, but what we did is we did make a half scale maquette and gave that to the computer guys so they could put those images in their computer and then manipulate it whatever way they wanted to. But, um, and also it's not so overwhelming that it's something you couldn't do in your garage. That's not going to create a huge mess. Um, but it's just, I, always thought, I, I always started out with models and stuff like that. that uh, it's kind of where I started with painting small stuff and then moving up from there. in these deep cracks here yeah, yeah. around the mouth, around the ears, stuff that looks like it's going to be decayed in the first one. Let's start adding a little bit of detail now. Do you, do you apply textures while you're painting or do you do textures separately? 
Is it all of you taking out like part and parcel or one or the other? Usually the textures in the sculpture, but uh, if it needs to be added or on there, that needs it, basically. That answers the question. Uh, do you ever use wax paint on silicones, or is it just straight acrylic paint on silicones if you can't mix actually silicone paint? What I would recommend is uh, neither of those, because uh, they won't stick. If you can get your hands on some skin illustrator makeups, that still doesn't stick, um, but it does stick better than any patch or anything like that. And you get the translucency of the silicone paint with those kind of paints. Um, but that's kind of a hard one. You usually have to paint silicone pieces with silicone paint. With silicone paint. Maybe just see how I just added that dark color to a one ear and start to make it become a little bit more rock than the can as opposed to the ear that I have and have your paint on it. I'm also going to add this color around the mouth. As well as that was Jamie, what's your favorite movie? Dude, my favorite movie is Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> What I'm doing right now is starting to add some dark, dark to uh, let's give the appearance of uh, some rotting flesh. Here. It's gonna be in the soft spots, like I uh, darkened this ear a little bit. Almost it gives it the the appearance as if they're they're going, you know, they're starting to like, turn black and gonna fall off.
So, you know, just, just something you know, else. Yeah. Just for I don't even know if this is a question, but maybe, uh, do you find digital 3D sculpting useful in the movie industry? <laughs> do I find it useful? Um, yeah, actually, we use that quite a bit to uh, do a lot of our sculptures at, uh, at the studio. Uh, unless it's a makeup appliance or something that has to be super, super fast, um, bang down really fast. Um, a lot of our artwork is all sculpted in the computer and then grow it on a, a 3D printer. <laughs> So I want to get into this material. If you can't help it, so you should ask and so forth. Start back there and cross them all. But I don't, I've never gone. Potential But I also need to know the piece of city to get actually working on as well. It's an intro. Really? Do you have special brushes, Jamie, for accurate details? Uh, the particular brushes I use are basically from um, any hobby store. Um, nothing really too fancy. Um, everything from a flat to a uh, round. Basically, my weapon of choice. I can, I can do most of what I want with those. But it's a synthetic material. It's hard, but it's really nice. I don't always throw a little bit of black in the back of my car just to so you can't see any further. This can see the difference. You want to see where it stops. And that, I've been a follow through too as well. People doing silicone heads and stuff like that I'll always enhance the darkness of like the nostril or the ear holes or even darken it in that deep part of the throat. So just to give it that illusion of continuation, not stopping at the end of the sculpture. Uh, somebody who's considering buying your silicone painting lesson wants to know if you can share the secret of what you use to seal it. What do you use to seal the silicone? <laughs> Uh, usually just a little bit more silicone, basically seal it. Um, 
basically the same silicone that uh, that I'll be painting the piece with, but with no pigment in it. And I'll just do a final seal coat of that. Two, I don't think I did in the video, but if you uh, if you do want me to prime it, you can also do so. It's basically the same technique of sealing it, which is um, just using a thin down version of what your, what your base is, which I use uh, the PSI 641. And, um, and that gives a nice fresh layer to stick to. A mechanic could take us anywhere from a week to two weeks to paint. Usually they. And John Rosengrant strives on, on mechanics. It's kind of his background with making models and stuff like that. So when we do one, we put in extreme detail and uh, it gets very lengthy of what the detail we, that he wants to see. So, um, no, we usually don't do it on uh, Macadamon City. Because we are also involved in putting it together, um, painting it, and putting all the little extra special stuff that John wants to see in there. So um, I'm sure John would love it if we could do it with Macadamon one, one sitting, but to the extent that we do it, it's, it's impossible. Is there a Someone wants to do character modeling for a living. Do they need a degree or just a portfolio? You just need to be good. If, you wanna, if there's anything that you want to do in life, you have to be really good at it, I guess. <laughs> Specifically, though, Jamie, um, the question is, does a certificate, a certificate very much weigh when you walk into a shop? Into a shop, I would say it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. If you guys did book and you got some good recommendations, um, Respected people, I, I would think that would be your best bet um, to get a um, degree in something like that. I don't have a degree in anything as far as art, art wise. Um, I do have my cosmetology license. I got that before I, I went out in the movie industry, did that for a while. And, um, but all my all my painting skills and sculpting skills that I, I, I learned on my own from watching it. I didn't have videos quite like this when I was doing it. But I remember Michael Burnett and Rob Berman had a series of videos. I, I must have watched each one of those at least a hundred times. Um, so, and then reading Pandora magazines back in those war zone that would always have makeup left. 
and, and I would just take any bit of information that I could find from anywhere and try to figure it out. But now with all these videos that we're giving out, that we're, we've been doing with the Felicity School, is really kind of, I won't say put the mystery, kill the mystery of it, but it's showing how to do it. Some of the stuff wouldn't be practical in a garage, but some of the stuff is just what we do. And that's and what we do in a studio, and I think that's what a lot of people want to see, is how we do it. And, and, uh, I'm gonna take it, take it from there. Like I said, I I spent so many hours in my garage trying to figure out how to do this stuff and kind of perfect it in a way. And I do it every day, so I'm still kind of practicing. So when I'm at a studio, when I'm at the Legacy, I, I that's all I do all day long is paint, paint, paint. And usually when I get home, I um, kind of wind down and hang out with the family a little bit, and um, I'll go back in the garage and start painting more. So, I've been, been doing it since I was about 13 years old, so. Do you use a lot of reference? We don't see like, you, know, you don't have, seem to have reference for shades and tones. Do you just know it, or what's the deal there? Yeah, I would think at, at this point in time, I kind of know where stuff goes and what I want to see. Um, when we do stuff for film, we obviously have reference. Um, a lot of the gore and stuff that we do as well, I. I kind of go off the imagination of what I want to see and how boring how it should look. Uh, I don't like to look at the real stuff, so when they get the, the um, those medical magazines in with the uh, real stuff, it's, it's, I have a pretty, pretty vivid imagination. I can make it look good and, and pass it off and make it real without having to duplicate something disturbing. And again, this, this one, this thing that I'm doing is all kind of just fun and for, it's just for looks. It's not nothing technical, it's not going for a movie or anything like that. It's just something that I can show you how to have fun with painting, not be intimidated by it, and just whatever you do with it. As long as you keep, keep with it, you know, it'll probably end up looking pretty cool. Um, a painting. painting can also be like a form of meditation. You kind of just get in your zone and and then nothing else matters. You have your headphones on or anything like that, you just uh, kind of get into your own thing. I haven't walked around yet at all. It's an interesting play he's got. He's down on his armatures. He's back in the corner there. Check him out. Check it out. Yeah. Unique play. My favorite zombie movie? Uh, it's really the Living Dead. Um, the new Donna Dead was pretty impressive, but my all-time classic was the Charlie Living Dead. Probably because it was one of the first ones I saw. Um, also, yeah, we got naked zombies in there, which is great. Can't be that. Um, but it was funny and creepy at the same time. And about the, the Return of the Living Dead guys was it's not like the Walking Dead where if you shoot them in the head, they die. They just seem like they just never, he had to like disintegrate the body in order to kill them. Again. So I always thought that was more frightening than just shooting them in the head and he's gone. So it's definitely Return of the Living Dead for me. I knew I wanted to do this. 
I thought that it would help me get into the industry by getting my cosmic coffee license and uh, learning both aspects of hair and makeup. And uh, it really didn't. No. <laughs> um, and I, I, I rarely do hair now. I think there's a friend of mine that I've known for 20 years that I actually still have her and her family's hair. But other than that, I, I, I touch it very rarely. That was me right there. Maker, painter, what would you do? What profession would you have? Uh, I would probably be doing hair. Definitely. I, I, I would have used my uh, cosmetology license for definitely make some money. Um, but I always knew I was kind of going to do this for a living. So. I already have the year subscription. Did you get the year subscription? Oh geez, I just oh yeah. Oh yeah, I actually have the phone. I, I, all the videos that are on there I've already seen. Oh good, good, good. Top and bottom. That's why I said this is like a two part video part, a four part. We paid all of that day. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a ten hour video. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well then you've got the uh, the next step is eyes, you just the eye eye uh, creation video the eyes. Low budget project. I've never seen that. And he's going to do an eye memory. That'll be nice. We're going to take it out and do it. Hey, Jamie, what's the particular job you've had that was just a nightmare for you, personal horror story? Do you want to hear a personal horror story? ML ML Farm wants to hear a personal horror story. Personal horror story happened not that long ago on a, on a, a Tom Cruise movie. It was a uh, Oblivion. We had to paint his jacket. He has little patches on his jacket. The, uh, we had to do like 25 or 30 jackets that were basically exactly the same. And um, we would we would finish a series of, of, of patches and we'd send it to the, the costume department and they would put them on and as they would sew them on they would rub off paint, we'd have to fix it up and then just to get to the point of what they wanted to see was just an absolute nightmare. We had to go back and forth to Hollywood to just just to show these people, do basically do the paint job in front of them, make them a master, and then we would keep a master, and um, for our reference, and then after a while, it, it just became such a nightmare that we told them to put the patches on before we were painted, and then we we would paint at the shop. But that was for something so simple, it was something that was so hard and so complicated, and. Uh, that was pretty rough on, on everybody's part. Uh, I remember Rosemary being extremely frustrated. Uh, Trevor Hensley and I were extremely frustrated on that. But we ended up pulling through, but 
Well, you see the poster, the other poster for Oblivion. It's just these little teeny patches that he has on his jacket, and it was just incredibly hard. It, it wasn't because it was a difficult paint job, it was just what the costume guys wanted to see and how it just changed. And it was nuts. It was kind of a lot. Oh, and can you contrast that with just a, a, a great experience, a painting experience that's like, just, this is why I'm in the business, this is so much fun? Uh, I don't particularly think I've painted something that, that, that so this is pretty amazing, this is uh, why I'm doing this. I've had plenty of experiences on set and cool movies that I've worked on that I've absolutely so this is why I do this. Uh, one of them was Spider-Man when I did when I worked on Spider-Man. I was always a huge fan of it, even when I was a kid. So to see him on set and to be part of the crew that made the suit and, and uh, see it come to life was really something, something special. Um, and when we did Cowboys on Aliens, that was. Uh, I had to ask his glass on that one. We were on set for a few months, and some of it was shot in Santa Fe, and all the puppet work, all the puppeteer stuff that we did was uh, at Universal Studios, which is anything in California. I, I, I love working on this because I'm not, I'm not so far from home. And, and uh, the Cowboys was great. It was, it was awesome. It was cool to walk on set and see Harrison Ford. And, Daniel Craig, you know, on the same set, you know, you got James Bond and, and uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Han Solo standing right in front of you. So that was, I had an absolute blast on that movie. And all the Iron Man movies have been fun to a certain degree. Um, I, I've, been, I've been part of the Iron Man stuff since, since the first one. So I'm, I still enjoy working on Avengers, it was fun. Um, this last, Iron Man, Iron Man 3 was pretty fun. But I would definitely say I have more plus happy stories than the negative ones, for sure. What's the smallest size figure you've ever painted? It's probably this. <laughs> um, yeah, usually our maquettes that we do are still pretty large. I would say something smaller did, would probably be like a personal project in the garage. Um, but when we do a maquette, we still it's still you know a couple of feet tall. And do you pay for pleasure? Do you paint your own stuff when you're not at work? Absolutely, I always paint. I think I paint too much. But yes, I, I absolutely 100% enjoy it still. Do you have a, a, a fantasy project God I would love to work on X? Uh, any particular fantasy projects? If they ever did a remake of Jaws, I would really like to be a puppeteer on the shark. But, how, about, uh, how about if you do a prequel? A prequel? To Jaws? Yeah. The baby? <laughs> um, Guppy. Yeah. Yeah, Jaws is my all-time favorite. That would just be tickled to work on a film like that, for sure. Just like... Some cards going. New cards. What I'm doing here, too, is kind of... Now I'm starting to bring shapes into form. I'm starting to make some... Map out some rotten flesh and ruins. So. And start bringing the door into it. Uh, Absolutely. Um, so you're I'm going to do that right now with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Ladies and gentlemen, everybody at the convention center, this crew meeting might be leaving around 3 o'clock, so this is your opportunity to go ahead and go ahead and go this point. I highly recommend you get over there uh, before you uh, leave us. Thank you. It is 1245. You're doing great. You're allowed to be done anytime. Hey, Jamie, if you could be one of the characters you painted, which one would it be? That's a great question. <laughs> if I could be any character that I painted, what would it be? I would be Sute from Avatar. He was pretty slick looking, I thought he would be. That's a really good question. Yeah, it's a super fun thing. Attention, Boston Police and Police. Please, Mario, phone lock in is at advantage. We are going to ask you 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 to ask Too much stuff in case it is. There we go. Yeah, you can, you can definitely use airbrush. Yes. We use airbrush on anything, pretty much. You know, they use airbrush for painting fingernails, so you can get pretty small. Have you ever gotten sick from paint chemical fumes? Uh, I've never gotten sick off of them, but I I felt pretty funky. Uh, breathing in some of that stuff, but uh, I haven't gotten sick. <laughs> <laughs> what up, dude? Hey, Yoga. Good to see you, man. Did you get a break? Did you get a break? No, no, dude, pretty They got beers here? Uh, uh, off topic, but uh, did you design your own tattoos? Uh, yeah, some of them, yeah. Sure. Is that a real question? It's a real question. Uh, actually, um, yeah, Death Becomes, he wants to know if uh, you designed your own tattoos. Death becomes you? Uh, yeah, dude. Um, That's a friend of ours, friend of the school. Yeah, I, I definitely designed a good portion of them. I got a bunch when I was young, so um, some I didn't. But the ones on my arms I did, yes. Tail slay. Uh, 
because we're moving along here, I'm going to start adding some colors to your eyes here. I guess having to make something more organic, real, pass it off as real, would probably be a lot harder than making a robot. Um, you, when we do robots and stuff, we use a lot of the automotive case and um, stuff that you put in the car with, so it's kind of, that's more technical is where painting something organic is a lot more artistic. Does that answer your question? Yes. I'm satisfied. You feel what 
continue, really. You probably do. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Katie, who are your influences as a painter? Who hates Rosetta? <laughs> Nobody likes Rosetta. Influences as a painter. Um, I'm trying to think. What's your problem? Really there's, a, there's a few artists that I, that I work with that I really admire the work. Um, he's a great painter. A um, couple of my. Joey O'Rosco is an amazing painter. He's a well as sculptor. Um, there's a lot of guys out there with tremendous skills. Um, it's hard to pinpoint one specific person. Um, what I grew up, I don't really um, follow one particular guy's work. It was kind of a collaboration of whatever looked good, but I'm trying to find out what artists did that. So I wouldn't really say I, I really had an influential painter. I guess that's kind of why I, I have my own paint style as well. Because I was influenced by somebody else, I don't want my stuff to look like theirs. Jumping ahead, are you going to add a gloss effect? Uh, there's going to be some juice coming off this guy. Absolutely. Did you get the points with the first? Is it just so happy? Oh, it's not real. It's not real. It's not real. How long do you think Monster Squad is? Jimmy, can you do a wrap up with us after Monster Squad? You're going to still be live with him, but can you do like a little, just a one minute wrap up of the whole thing on our good cameras? Okay. Taking our cameras away. Shoot. Tom Woodruff, please. You, you need the third camera when we're done. This one? No. Just turn the camera on. Yeah. More 5D. Taking all three? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were leaving. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to leave one to capture the rest of the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Just take two with you, and then 15 minutes are over. That's all. I mean, I'll break. No, I'm not going to shoot up. I can leave this here, but we don't have our own yet. You can't. You gotta go.
Hey, John. We'll see you guys later. Oh, Matt's running it. I, uh, is it in a bag or something? Or Jamie, do you have a public Facebook page? Uh, you don't, do you? No. That's fine. Awesome. So, you guys can put this on this black in here so that you guys can see. You can push this. What do you do with deadlines when people are trying to, like, you know, when you have to paint something faster than it's humanly possible? Then I start working as fast as humanly possible. Um, yeah, we deal with crazy deadlines all the time. That's that's uh, it kind of goes with uh, experience as well. You know, you know, if you know your job well, you don't really have to free plan it out. You kind of just go through the motions of getting it finished and knowing what needs to be done to make it get to the point of being finished. I think it has to absolutely be hectic at times. Usually we have a, a couple of weeks to paint the cats. Um, it's just, the size of it takes a lot of detail, a lot of time to do, so we usually will we'll take a couple of weeks to do something. Because yeah, we also add clothes to it and put real clothes and real hair. Um, depends on the detail. Like, um, it's a bunch, bunch of stuff I can talk about, but um, like to do an iron man, we do an iron man with that. As long as it's the deadline allows, we can paint an iron man within a couple of days or a couple of weeks. So. Do, you, do you think that digital sculpting and 3D printing makes practical effects in traditional sculpting a dying art? I absolutely do, yeah. Yeah, it definitely is it's killing the, uh, the sculptors out there. Um, there's still a lot of practical stuff going on out there, but I do absolutely find it um, affecting the industry a lot, you know. You ever do lighting tests with your maquettes? Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the main things that we do maquettes for. <laughs> um, we had a Hulk maquette on the Avengers. We had 
uh, full body hall shows, I want to say it was like either quarter scale. Um, they used that as the line of reference. And then we also had a silicone life size bust of the hall uh, painted up that was also they put on a stand and it would replicate. It would, it would be how tall the hall would be. And then they used that for all the, the lighting and stuff like that. So we definitely do a lot of lighting stuff on other cats. I'm working on the eyes right now. I'm trying to just get uh, the general eye thing going on right now. Do you need tiny brush you're using? Any specific brush? Uh, it's a number three round. It's not the smallest that I have, but it's still kind of uh, it's pretty tight. Email me if you want after the show. It's toys. Oh, cool, man. Thank you. We're over in the corner. Cool. Absolutely. Thank you, bro. Yeah, you got airbrushes. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Great. How do you rest your eyes to avoid lighting stress when you're painting like this in long stretches? <laughs> there is no way. You just get used to it. Either do it or you don't. <laughs> um, sometimes, man, you, you, you're working. I don't know if it's so long on small things, and it's just, you can see great while it's close up, but when you look far away, everything just kind of gets blurry, which always makes for a fun drive home as well. You sort of answered this with your oblivion story. So what's the hardest thing you had to paint for a movie? Uh, yeah, that, that oblivion thing was a nightmare. Uh, but then again, it wasn't the, it wasn't the technical side of it. It was just dealing with people that were kind of off the rocker a little bit. Um, Personalities are always harder than the paint jobs. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Personalities are definitely harder than paint jobs. Um, and there's been a few struggles with paint and stuff. Uh, I can't think of anything right off the top of my head that pops out of them. But um, 
There's a guy I work for that always, uh, his name's Gary Tunnicliffe, that would always bring the most out in, in you. And that would kind of be by critiquing you to a point to where he didn't want to hear it anymore. So every time he did paint for him, he gave it your all, which you should always do. But uh, he always had that ability of bringing the best work out of, out of you. Um, so, and that kind of proves to be difficult at some points too, especially when you're going to get, at, get in and get out, so. Do you ever use chalk pastels for shading? I've never used chalk pastels for okay. Nothing. But uh, what I have used before is um, when I mark up stuff, when I age stuff down for robots, uh, I have used crayons in that just to make uh, scuff marks and different kind of. Uh, why I did that is I remember when I was in football in high school. Um, when you'd make a good tackle, you'd get stick mark in your helmet. And I remember I wanted to, uh, uh, after a game, I came home and my, my brother said, I was getting ready to clean up my helmet so it looked pristine. And he's like, no, 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 don't ever take off your stick marks. It's always, that's part of what you do, you know, so. And that was kind of stuck with me. So too, when I am painting a creature or something, or a, you know, a robot that has some definite scuff marks in there, is, um, I'll go in there with crayons and kind of outline stuff, but I'll also just dig it in so hard to where it kind of expands the butt come off. It will if you rub it hard enough, the, the, the crayon will come off, but um, I, I do use some of the regular kind of art, little artsy kind of stuff. So I, I just have never used a chalk pastel for anything. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of compliments online. People think that's looking great, baby. We're loving it. It's nice to hear. Thank you. Do you ever, uh, do you do digital painting? Do you paint in ZBrush or anything? I could barely send an email. I, I, really, I, don't, I don't know anything as far as the computer goes. I always left that to my wife if I even sent something. So. Digital painting, go see John Mahoney. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything as far as the digital stuff, man. Uh, give me a piece of paper and we'll, we'll have some fun. Jamie, when you're working with uh, many different artists painting the same thing, how do you decide who paints what? How do you collaborate? Uh, that's a good question. Usually, you'll have, you'll definitely have a lead on the show um, if you're collaborating with people, or you'll have a, you know artwork that that shows you what what look you need to achieve, and. and um, Everybody will kind of just collaborate. You say you do the head, you, this guy does the arms, and then towards the end, you'll, you'll tie it all in. So collaboration with people is definitely something we do all the time. Um, there's rarely one thing that you work on that you're the sole painter on, um, especially on big things. It's almost impossible. Um, so collaboration with co coworkers is definitely, you know, something that is key as far as making uh, stuff look good. And, and a lot of times, too, like the guys I work with at Legacy, I've worked with them for the last 10 years. So we kind of understand each other and know our artistic abilities. And it's easy to kind of go with somebody you know. And um, it absolutely is more difficult, too, when you go to a studio that you work with somebody that you don't know their artwork. And, and uh, it can become more difficult like that. But for the guys, uh, when I was at Stan's, you know, and, and, and Legacy, I just, I've known the dudes for so long that I just, I know, I can collaborate. Well, I guess it's, it's kind of like with musicians, too. If, you gotta, if you're playing with the same musicians for a while, you, you kind of feed off of them, too, as well. So, one of the ways I collaborate. All 
Alright, what's next? So what we're doing right now is I'm going to just make a little ink mixture and I'm going to pop out some of these wounds. And uh, the ink that I'm going to be using is called copper various inks. And that's another thing that you can get at the start, uh, art store. It's basically uh, marker refills. But I'm just going to do this to enhance some of the juicy stuff. But at the very end, I'm actually going to put this into my uh, epoxy, which is going to be my tint color to for blood and, and um, the juicy stuff. But before I do that, I'm just going to put a little clear glass finish on the eyes uh, just to seal it in so if I go over it, I don't rub it off. Um, but at the very end, I am going to put a high gloss on the eyes as well. What I want to do is not have them sell baby blue as well. I want it to dry good. And, um, and I'm going to put a uh, fog over it, basically like a white um, wash. That will make it a clear foggy instead of crystal clear bluey eyes. Awesome. Let's see it. I can get this cap open. We can hand it off. We can do that. We got people. Pretty solid, huh? That is, man. That's sealed under. All right, it's you, man. Hot water. Oh, wait. What do you got? All right. Here we go. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> is, that, is that permanent? Hot water. Is hot water. I'll take it to the bathroom. I can always use the epoxy if we can't get it up. <laughs> That's all right. Um, but I'm going to mix up a little blood color with this, this stuff, uh, the topics. Um, I'm going to start with the red. And put a little bit of yellow in there. And a touch of blue. That gives you a nice blood blood color. Again, this is just a transfer of my the wounds on the middle of the wall. Or Jerusalem Tuesday. Hotel Lobby in the Jenny Glover of the Hotel Country Train. Great street. Get up to the lobby for a great sign and experience being Jenny Glover. I'm going to be Yeah, it's just a acrylic clear gloss. Um, I was uh, I've puppeteered many times. Um, 
But as far as being a character, um, probably like 10 years ago, um, I was working with uh, Michael Burnett, and he was on a, <laughs> this guy right here. Um, and uh, he was cool enough to get us, get us a, a part as a zombie in uh, Passion, right? And uh, I think that was pretty much the only time I've ever been on screen as far as a creature. Um, but as far as puppeteering, yeah, we, we've uh, been a plenty of times. But that was a fun experience. As, as a matter of fact, I I was trying to locate that episode tonight. It's good, but uh, it was a lot of fun. There was a, a bunch of us guys from the, from the shop all kind of did our different zombies under uh, Michael's direction, and uh, we had a we had a blast on set. It was great. I got to crawl out of a, a grave, so that was pretty neat. And then at the end of it, Michael. Do you remember at the end of that thing we did the whole uh, yeah, the thriller dance? The thriller dance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think um, uh, somebody put it up on YouTube. Oh, did you? Yeah, I didn't do it, but somebody else somebody had shot. So I that That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was awesome. That was great. Matt McCotter asks, have you ever been asked to change a design during filming? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, um, when we, on Spider-Man 3, when we did Venom, um, throughout the whole shoot, we, it was going through changes. Um, but fortunately for the character, it kind of went with it because he had the symbiotic creature on that always kind of changed his look. Um, but yeah, we, um, I remember Joey Joey Orozco was doing the sculptures while we were already filming it and, uh, and had stuff. It was really bizarre. I didn't know how they were going to you know, turn it in there, but we ended up finding out that it's a symbiotic thing. But uh, yeah, we've done that quite a, quite a few times. I remember. Uh, well, I can't remember. But yes, we, we've definitely changed up designs in the middle of, of shooting, for sure. Um, I was going to say, on Iron Man, Iron Man 2, the um, Mark IV suit, the, um, the triangle chest, when we did the suit for that, um, and then I saw the poster, and, uh, was, it wasn't our paint job on it, they actually uh, changed it quite a bit, and I don't know why they didn't change it on the set, but They'll also do it even if we're not done for the full change.
No, we absolutely have to manage the uh, inventory, and it's usually left up to me, um, John Sharevka or Trevor Hinsley, and Dave Merritt actually gets involved in the ordering process, but yeah, we we know what's been used and we know what we need to get, so yeah, we take care of all the inventory and, and uh, order and order. Somebody wants to know, what was the name of that film you were in as a zombie? They want to find it. Oh, it wasn't really a film. It was a uh, it was an old soap opera that got, uh, I don't think it's on the air anymore, but it was called Passions. And, uh, nice, the zombie episode of Passions. The zombie episode of Passions. You find that on YouTube, everybody. Yeah, that was, it was fun. <laughs> If I find a picture of that, I'll, uh, I'll put that on Instagram if there's anybody out there that follows me on that. But I'll, I'll definitely try to uh, hunt down some of those photos. That, that was a fun, fun little thing. Any advice for aspiring painters as we're wrapping up here? Practice. Practice all the time. That's kind of the only way you get good. Um, Definitely. That and also just take uh, take notes on, on what you see and what looks cool and try to either you know replicate it or put your own twist on it and make it your own. But just never never stop practicing. You know, us and you know even in the, the movie industry we practice all the time. You know, like I said, I'm I'm in my garage. Almost every day after work, working on something. Uh, um, 
Yeah, I actually just messed up the eyes, so I'm fixing it. I haven't done that yet. Oh, okay, um, that's coming up. Yeah, it's coming that's up. Right. Right. Fix these yeah, eyes. Yeah, just yeah. Still on photo? Human? What's that? Human? Human, yeah. Right now, it's just a nice time of year. It's very, very California-like weather. Oh, you've been there now. Nine years. Nine years? Wow. Yeah. Jeez. In August, nine years. So those acrylics you're using or, or inks? Uh, acrylics yeah, up to this point. Yeah, it's just these little model, yes, yeah, no, okay. uh, model acrylics. Well, I'm not, yeah, I'm not we notice online you rarely use gloves. Uh, the paint gets on your hands. Do you find it in your beard? Is that a pain <laughs> for you? Um, I'm trying to keep it just on my hands. <laughs> nice. Uh, somebody asks, painting the Iron Man suit, what was the most difficult part of the suit? Was it the texture, color? The masking? It was like never ending masking on that. Um, every Iron Man that we did, they always varied the color so they could sell it as toys, so it would just be a variation. Here's one of the guys that supplies us with some of the Iron Man paint over here. Um, so everything was always a little different. We developed new techniques and different layers and processes to, to achieve the Iron Man looks. Um, but as far as difficult, um, doing a simulated brush metal kind of thing was, was a little difficult, but uh, ended up looking really good. Cool. Analyzed by these inks. Okay. All right. We'll get to the inks now, I guess. All right, this is just a like a one minute epoxy. Um, clear epoxy. Clear epoxy, yes. Um, and the blood color that I mixed up, I'll I'll use that as my tint, and I'll just. Uh, Mix it up right in there. Thank you. 
Somebody. Um, I also have little fishmen maquettes to zombie guys. Um, anything and everything. You know, um, I guess about that's about it. I'm gonna. So that blood you just did—that was the. This, this was the topics and the one minute epoxy, which are uh, well, I should say five minute epoxy. Give it a little bit and then it's set up to a little. Be hard. There you have it. Ooh. Little girl zombie head. Very nice. Can you see that close up on that with the white pants? Or with a little bit of a Uh, this stuff thickens too. You can kind of breathe drips and all. But uh, get hard and stay in that shape. Well, that's about it, guys. We're going to get ready for Mr. Landon coming up here soon, right? Don? Don coming up here. Awesome sculpture. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. There's a lot of um, photos I put up of past work and recent work. So if you're interested, by all means. There you go. It looks good. Your life looks good. Looks good. Okay, uh, let's go to 
gonna cut the camera. At least this one. I'll leave the webcam. Uh, yeah, might as well. I mean, done. Is it still for me? We gotta do this. Jamie, that was fantastic. Everybody, loves you. thank you, Jamie says I'm out. Thank you, Jamie says Ireland. Thank you, Jamie. We've got fans all over the world now.